Well, hello, traders and investors. I'm L.A. Little. This is your daily Neo TA wrap. Take a look at these markets from a neoclassical perspective, looking at supply and demand on the charts, folks, and using the information the charts give us to make decisions. When to enter, when to exit, which way to point. I do the show four times a week, Monday through Thursday. is broadcast every before 10 o'clock Eastern Time. It's archived on YouTube under the channel L.A. Little. We had a wild one a day. Um, you know, finally they come in, they spill it. But uh, when you got these bullish markets, they don't want to give it up. In other words, anytime they see a dip, they want to come back in and, and buy it. And that's usually what happens on the first dip. You see it here. Sometimes that will allow you to shoot back up, right? Sometimes it won't. And so as this as this sprung back up over here, you know, got the got the push, and eventually you get the the consolidation. Now you got the push. Is this the beginning of the consolidation? My estimation is, is that, yeah, it is. You're going to see this sort of consolidation begin to play out over here. And so my expectation is you're not going to get new highs. You may make now on new highs. There are a couple targets still up there. But at this point, if you're doing any kind of money management, you know, and, and if you're not day trading, you know, the risk of hanging in here now to get that last half a percent or whatever it is, it's just not worth it, right? You've already got the easy money. Why why struggle for what's left? So, you know, my expectation here is that you're going to see this market begin to build out another range. Where's that range coming to? Well, you've got this retest regen. You've already tested it once. It would be the second test. That means it should get in the bottom part of it, down around 2440, if that's where it's going to be. So that's where I'd be focused on. Uh, you know, what, what you saw today was somebody started selling, right? Some larger set of players began to sell, uh, whether it was bots that took over, whatever it was. That created a cascade of sell orders. As soon as you took out this little bitty island right up here, right? You're down there trying to hold that. As soon as that broke, right? All the stop orders kicked in. And then what does it do? It's not on this chart, it's on the other one. But when it got to this next gap, right? Fills it, flips around, closes back up in there. Are we going to get more selling tomorrow? I wouldn't be surprised if we saw more selling. You got a bearish engulfing here, and you're going to see it on every one of the charts uh, here tonight. NASDAQ, big bearish engulfing on it. Again, big cascading sell, a lot of volume come in. This is the second time we've seen one of these warning signs, right? You got one back here. And then what does it do? It consolidates for a long period of time. And then you finally get your push up again. So now here's the next one. Now this one, just like back here, right? You had that area that it bounced off of, right? Because everybody wants to come in and buy it. But then again, when you leave volume down there, just like you did again today, what do you typically do? Well, you come back in and test it. Now, the last time they actually tested it the very next day. I don't know if we'll gap down tomorrow and do it. Amazon reported after the bell. Uh, it's down 2 or 3%. I saw most of the things that reported after the bell down. Uh, so, you know, you might get pressure first thing in the morning again. Uh, but the big thing to me is that you've left volume at the bottom. That volume looks like it came in almost the same as it was back here, just a little bit lighter. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised to see it test and then see them try to hold it again. So that test into here. Uh, came on slightly less volume. If you draw this across, it was slightly less, not very much, but a little bit less. So that's uh, the NASDAQ. Uh, NDX. Now, the NDX, of course, had Facebook pulling it up, pulled everything up this morning. They tried to, you know, jam them higher. And then, of course, that cascade selling came in. If you do the numbers on this one, it's about the same. You test into this area, you close this gap here, and then you reverse it back up and close above it. You leave volume at the bottom, that means you're probably going to come back here at some point uh, in the future, and probably not that long in the future. Russell, now the Russell test end of a swing point high, and this is the second test. Okay, so second test. Your probabilities go way down, and the likelihood that you get to the bottom third of it down into here somewhere is higher. You had some volume pickup, so you had volume, if you compare it to your Swing point high and your breakout bar, where's your volumes? In both cases, volumes are a lot lighter on a comparative base. Actually, that's not quite true. This one here is from there. Uh, volume is actually a little bit lighter today than it was on this one. So that's a good sign. 
So if you trade back into here, you probably can still get a bounce out of it unless volume picks up on that trade. That's the indexes. Let's take a quick look at the sectors, uh, and then I'm going to flip through some individuals charts. Um, I'll try to just start doing a few of those. Uh, if I'm if I'm trying to do a 10-15 minute show at max, you know, five ten minutes, it's kind of hard to get to them. IYT. This thing just gets blown out of the water today, and volume just totally comes in. So, you know, the big thing about this is this is your Dow theory. I talked about it this weekend. I talked about, you know, they better hold it. Well, they didn't. And so what this says, you know, and, and, and again, if you're not moving stuff around the country, the theory goes uh, the economy's slowing down, stupid. And so if you blow this away, what was up is no longer up. It's most likely sideways. And so more than likely, we've put in another short-term top here. You do have some congruent swing point lows here on the weekly. So if you go blow these away, it would become a big deal. Uh, we're far enough away from that. I don't think that's going to happen uh, yet. Uh, but that is not that far away now. You're down 3% today. Close was uh, 65.41. And these guys are at uh, 57. That's roughly 8 on uh, 1.5. So that's about 2%. So 2%, yeah, I guess it can hit it, right? Hit it today, 2%, if I'm doing the numbers right. I think that's right. So I don't know. Something to watch. Uh, that that would kind of be detrimental, I should say. Here's the uh, socks. Now, the socks uh, couldn't do anything. Boy, and volume's really light, if that's true. Uh, that may get revised later on the next round of the updates on the programs. Basic materials. Uh, let's see what they did. So they come off, they're into the swing point high, doing another retest. So this second trip back, that means they ought to get lower, 54, 60 or so. Uh, XLE, okay, now this one is actually getting pretty interesting. It's trying to turn, has been trying to turn. So you got a swing point high here today, it gets over it. And suspect, but it is over it. So, so you've had two thrusts now, both have held. Uh, this may finally be putting in some sort of a bottom. So a good action here. Let's see if it can go up and uh, break higher. This is the key spot. I think you get over this, you can go test the swing point high next and potentially that breakdown bar. If you pull this back, look at it a weekly, you're way down so you could get a decent bounce out of this and still not mean much. Uh, let's see, financials. Let's see what the financials look like. So on the financials, we just hit a high two days ago. Today we're in there testing with more volume uh, lighter volume than the breakout, but more volume than the, the swing point. Going to go after the bottom, and it's, and it's within six bars, so it should get in the bottom third. And just to let you visualize it better, it's this bar, and it's into the bottom third, almost to the actual bottom. So that's doing what it's supposed to. If it's if it if it's going to continue its uptrend, it's going to hold here. If not then the uptrend is probably sideways, not up anymore. You get enough of those that go sideways, eventually you get some sort of a turn in the market. XLI, and this one, we'd already talked about this one, it failed before, still more pressure today. Uh, you got a bearish, this is interesting, I didn't even pick up on this. One, two, three, yeah, it is. So it's up underneath this swing point low, that's the break today, you see that green arrow? That means this is gonna be the bearish retest regenerate. If you don't get back up in there right away, then that would say, hey, this thing's going to go even lower So because you regenerate lower. So you fell this swing point high. Now it um, looks like the big volume bar is right there. So you've actually got a decent chance of holding the more I look at this. Right here is your volume bar. Test into this volume bar and was not even close in terms of the volume. So... XLI, maybe it starts to find itself. XLK, now this was the darling, along with the NASDAQ, right? Big move up, constant all the way up. I count them 16 days up, seven of which were gaps on the NDX. Uh, this one's not quite the same, but it looks pretty close. Uh, big bearish engulfing tonight, back into the swing point high. And that's a little bit uh, different than what you saw in the NDX. Uh, let's see what the safety sectors did right quick. Consumer durables. Yeah, good pop there, so a little bit of a safety trade. And utilities also. How about healthcare? Now, healthcare was already showing weakness, continues to show weakness and volume starting to come out of it. I think uh, the big part of the runs there is uh, is uh, is going to be close to being done. Uh, still holding the bullish retest regen, but barely, and it looks like it probably fell. 
XLY. This is going to be Amazon tomorrow. Okay, so what did this one do? Swing point high, 92.42. Tested today. Fells on price, not on volume. That says it can try again. Doesn't have to test it tomorrow, uh, but the ideal is that it will try to get back up there again. So uh, maybe like it will be, or like it has been for so long, maybe Amazon will simply rise from the grave one more time and go make new highs. I wanted to turn uh, real quickly to just a few. This is what I do for members. I take a, um, I keep a spreadsheet of all the earnings that take place, and this is the current ones in July, and not all the earnings, but the major ones, right? The ones I deem major, and I just keep a question, you know, how do they react? Bullish, sideways, whatever, and then we can use that as our cheat sheet for for uh, uh, trades that come uh, after. Uh, the earnings, right? Call them post-earnings trades. And it's just a lot safer, right? Because you have more information. You know what's going on. Abbott, let's just take a look. I want to show you a couple of these. Here's Abbott coming back into this bar. That's the breakout bar. Volume extremely heavy. This is the retest region. And you got one, two, three, four, five. If you stay above it tomorrow, the next bar will be six. When the next bar is six, your probabilities go up hugely. And because it was a breakout with a uh, um, uh, confirmed breakout, you're around 92% that that first time back into here, the top third, it will get bought and it will at least bounce, if not regenerate higher. That's the kind of things you need to know, right? Not just your re risk reward, in other words, where am I going to put my stop, where's my reward, but how are my probabilities laid out? How good or bad are they? That's neoclassical, folks. That's what we do. Right, because when you have both of those, you can make wiser decisions. You can pick those things with high probabilities, along with good risk reward, and then you take your stab at the ones that make the sense. Matter of fact, you can plunge in them. You can put most of your money or a good portion of your money on them. Here's ABX. Uh, ABX was a sideways. I had it marked as sideways after earnings, and still looks like it's sideways. AMD. I had this one as bullish after earnings. Um, And that one's going to struggle. That one's going to struggle, but it looks like it's going to hold. And if so, try to regenerate. Amgen. This one was marked as sideways after earnings. And sure enough, it is sideways. It, and it looks like it's going to try to take this out. Low was 172. Ah, held it, barely. So you may get the bounce first. Right, This is the full retest region off this swing point high. So it's a full retest and an attempt to regenerate. You already had a nice big push. Volume's not huge. So you could get a bounce out of this. So one could play this, for example, off the bounce, off this being the volume down here at the bottom of this retest, and try to trade it back into this bar here. Right? So your risk is very small. In other words, you can put your stop now. You can just put it right up underneath here. Try to buy in in the morning somewhere, depending on where you can get it. Have a very tight stop. Have a decent probability of this thing bouncing. Now the bad thing is it's just the bounce now. So you don't want to you don't want to buy this thing and hold on to it. But your breakout was here. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? Your probabilities are very high this thing's gonna bounce. And so you can trade that and you can trade it with a lot or a lot uh, of confidence and very little risk. This is what you do folks. This is how you make money. People say you can't time these trades. That's nonsense. It's total nonsense. You're not going to win every one of them, but you can win 60, 70, 80% of them as long as you pick the best ones and you pick them based on the probabilities with good reward to risk. And your portfolios will be just like mine, all-time highs as of tonight, even with today's debacle. Have a great one. Take care. Good night.